Oh, what's that? What's that? Oh, oh, oh! You dropped them. You dropped them. You dropped them. What's that? The snacks from uh, from outside the library. They're giving them out. Were they free? <clears throat> Andrew, were they free? Were they what? Did you have to pay for them? No, they were just giving them out because they're new flavours. From the library? Yeah. The library has brought out a new flavour of crisps. Oh, no. Library flavoured crisps. No, no, I meant that I got them from the stand outside the library, not in the library. Oh, I see. So they're not actually, they're not actually anything to do with the library itself? No, no. What flavours are there? I don't know, I haven't read them yet. This one is uh, cozy by the fireplace, <laughs> cozy by the fireplace flavour, which apparently is um, another name for turkey and cranberry flavour. Really? Why, Why didn't they, they just, just say, say that? Haha, <laughs> we said it at the same time. <laughs> I know, it's weird. Exactly. Why didn't they just say that? Just, tr just trying to mm. confuse us. Yeah. <clears throat> What's that um, one? This one's called wrapped up warm. What do you think that is? Pigs, pigs in blankets? And blankets? Oh! It's got to be pigs in blankets, surely. Mm. Want to have another guess? Hmm. Glazed ham? Nope. Cheese and crackers? Crackers flavoured crisps? How? Well, I don't. I don't know what. I just. I don't know what are they. Just tell me what. Just tell me what they are. We were right the first time. Pigs in blankets. Right, then, then why did you... I don't know, I, I thought it would be funny if you thought it was wrong, but then you said crackers flavoured crisps and now I can't stop thinking about it. <sighs> would they just be slightly salty crisps? Oh, I, I was thinking like Christmas crackers. You weren't even thinking of the food? I was thinking cheese because <clears throat> because I like cheese and onion crisps, but then I realised that they were a Christmas flavour, so I thought of Christmas crackers. So cardboard flavoured crisps? Cheese and crackers. Cheese and cardboard flavoured crisps. Yeah. And you get a mini screwdriver or pack of playing cards in every crisp? Yeah. You're a joker. I found the bells you were looking for. Oh, where were they? They were in the corner cupboard, and guess what else I found in there? I don't know, a stronger work ethic? No, no. I still haven't been able to find one of those, but look. Oh, wow, a Christmas sheet poster. Was that in there too? Yeah, in the corner cupboard. How weird's that? Remember what I was saying the other day? Yeah. Meh. Is that a packet of crisps in the background? <sighs> Andrew. Look, there. Did you see that? Is, was that there before? I don't remember that being there. That's because it's not there. It's a hole in the poster. You're looking at the packet of crisps in my hand. Oh, see? Right, yeah, I see. <laughs> Good. Great. So anyway, these bells. Oh yes, here, look. Yep. Do you have the script? Uh, let me just find it again. Um, head office, email from yesterday. Do we both need bells? Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, here you go. For you. Thank you. Do you want to just check that they jingle properly? <laughs> yeah. Let's start with a jingle. Mm. With a jingle. Yeah, I heard, yes, I heard you first time. Like a little song. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, uh, let's just start. Yeah, let's, let's just start. <clears throat> Here we are jingling the oh. bells at Christmas at oh the God. discount bookshop. Oh Why my. don't you jingle with us oh oh so God. the fun don't stop? Oh my god. Almost everyone wants to join in all around. Where uh, shall we begin? Andrew, stop, stop, stop. I don't know what I don't know what that is, but I do not like that. Can you just stop can you just what? just give me a moment. Just give me a moment to get used to that. It was singing. It was not. It was. It have you heard singing? I've heard singing. Mm. I have, Jess, I've heard singing. Well, you're going to have to get used to the sound of my voice because it's in the grotto script. Look, in the, so the Santa's grotto script, it's in it. What? What? Look, where is it? Um... Please don't find it. Here, look, look. Oh my god, what am I going to do? 
Well, I don't know. Do I sing that bit as well? No, look. Have you looked at the script? No, no look. of course I haven't. Look, that's the manager's solo. There. Hmm. See? And then you sing the next bit. Can I just come on after you've sung your bit so I don't have to listen? No, because look, at the beginning, here, look. Mm-hmm. Uh, where? where is it? At the where? beginning, we both we both say some lines. Oh, my God. It's not that bad, Jess. I don't know if I can do it. You don't have to sing well. No, I mean, I don't know if I can listen to your singing. Oh, all right. Okay, well, that's actually hurtful. And I'm sorry. Well, let's just practice now whilst no one's listening and there's no pressure for it to write, go right first time. I don't think it's going to go right. I don't think it's going to go right any time, Andrea. I but do you know... Do you know, I was actually going to record this rehearsal for the Discount Bookshop podcast and now I'm definitely not going to do that because this is this is going to be so bad. No, don't record it yet. Let's, let's just figure it out first. I might have to put a warning at the start of the episode and I don't know how to do that. Surely you just say at, say at the start, warning, this podcast contains in, unenthusiasm, uh, new crisp flavour, spoilers and bad singing. Should we just go from the top? See, even your laughing is unenthusiastic and, uh, and actually that is quite impressive. Should we just go from the top? Yeah, okay. Can you see the script if I put it like that? Mm-hmm. Because I'm assuming you don't know your lines, considering you haven't read it. I don't. I do not know my lines, and and because I haven't read it. Okay, fair enough. But have you do, have you read? Do you know your lines? I think it's the real question because you're the manager and it's supposed to start from the top. Well, no, I've, isn't I've, it? So, well, do you know I've, your lines? Well, no, but I've been busy. Mm, busy. Mm -hmm. Managing. Doing so managing. Okay. Have you got your bell? Is Should we just start? Can we just can we just start? Can I just please? Can I just say one more thing? I just it's on my mind. I, I, it's just I've got into the habit of now. Oh, you didn't manage to learn your lines, so did you? Okay, but so you're ma managing because you're a manager. Okay, so yes, we can begin now. Yeah. Got okay. That much, yes. Okay, that was a good one. To be fair, um, have you got your bells? Got my bells. Have you got your bells? I've got my bells. Have you got your bells? No, I'm just joking. Okay, here we hmm. go. <coughs> a big ho 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 to you all I said a big ho 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 to you all Shall I be the audience? Oh yeah, okay, good idea Okay, I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready Have you, have you seen that? No, okay, never mind Welcome everyone my name's Chief Twinkle Toes. And my name's Cheery Ribbon Curler. A big ho 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 to you all. I said a big ho 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 to you all. <laughs> Jess, it says in the script that the audience say and a, and a big ho 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 to you too, Santa Claus. Yeah, but what, what if they don't say that though? It says that they do. Yeah, but they, they, they don't have a script, so they might not say that. You know, you're going to have to improvise if, if they don't do what you expect them to. How do I do that? Uh, just say something like, and a big hello all, uh, also. And a big hello also. No, the, the audience aren't engaged with your performance, Andrew. Maybe, maybe when you say your first line, you, you put your hand up to your ear and lean towards the audience so they know you want them to shout out, you know? And a, a big ho 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 to you all. Yeah. Yay. The audience is supposed to say ho ho ho. Well, I'm sorry, but they've chosen to say yay instead. You, you're just going to have to roll with it. But then the next line doesn't make sense. Well. That's the best ho 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 I've ever heard. I ho ho hope you are excited to meet Santa Claus. Yay. And how many of you have been good this year? I have because I'm always good because I've got a little sister and she's not good but I'm good and we're going to the cinema after this to see a film and I'm not allowed to have popcorn normally but I am allowed today because I sometimes don't eat my lunch but today I did and now I'm allowed to have popcorn today because I've been good. What was that? Sometimes kids j like to just shout out, you know, they're unpredictable, you never know what they're going to say when they're in the audience. They're excited, they're about to see, meet Santa, you know? Oh, but then this doesn't make sense. Can you show me who's been good with a raise of hands? 
Oh, wow. Wowee. That's loads of you. I'm very happy to see to see that so many of you have been good this year and I hope it will continue henceforth. Do you think the kids know what henceforth means? Definitely not. Okay, my bit. Um, <clears throat> oh, what have we got to us elves are good most of the time, but but naughty some of the time. Have any of you heard of naughty elves? But uh, cheery. I don't think they want to hear about all of the naughty things elves get up to. Well, chief, I guess I guess we won't tell them then. No, sorry, but chief says that you don't want to know about the time we brought food and drink into the shop. Or the time that we left an empty milkshake cup on a pile of brand new stock. Or the time that we forgot to say thank you after we'd bought the most amazing value products which are also available online with free click and collect delivery if you spend the minimum amount. I know, to make up for uh, us not telling you about our naughtiness, about the elves naughtiness, how about we sing you a song instead? No. Jess, the audience will want to hear our song. Yeah, yay. Okay, here we go. <coughs> Jess, cover your ears. Here we are jingling the bells at Christmas at the discount bookshop. Why don't you jingle with us so the fun don't stop? Almost everyone wants to join in all around. Where shall we begin? How about here in store 363 days of the year? Okay, your turn. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, here, Santa's sleigh get near. How, uh, hear how everyone sings. Customers lining up outside to make their purchases. Checking out price comparisons online. We're the most cost efficient by far. They're keen to get in, so travel from afar. <coughs> okay, and if, if, if anyone's around, uh, still around after we finish that very testing song, um, I then say, uh, now, if you'd like to follow us, I, th I think someone's waiting to greet you into the grotto. Is it? Could it be? I can't wait. I know that for sure. Yes, it's true. I can feel the buzz in the air. The excitement's almost overwhelming. Absolutely, Chief. I quite agree. The atmosphere in here is elastic. Cheery! Don't you mean the atmosphere in here is electric? Oh yes, I do make mistakes sometimes, but as long as we learn from our mistakes, we'll become better people. Quite right, well said. Andrew, the scene drags on a bit, doesn't it? Quite right, well said. What comes after that? It doesn't say, so presumably the Santa's grotto opens. Who's Santa? Santa Claus. Yeah. Who's Santa Claus? No, I mean, who's playing Santa? Oh, no one's actually playing Santa. Well, I mean, some, someone from head office is, is playing Santa, but they won't, there won't be a live Santa so much as a live stream Santa. There's no real Santa. Jess, I found that out when I was eight years old. No, yes, I, I know there's no real Santa. God, this is hard work. You, you mean there's no live, real person, actor playing Santa in the room? No, no, that'd be far too expensive to have one in every store. Well, what on earth? You know those cardboard cutouts that you were talking to Sean Matthews about a couple of episodes ago? We're not just having a cardboard Santa. Andrew, mm. we're not, are we? Andrew, your silence is deafening. Please tell me our customers aren't going to wait outside, line up, buy a ticket... I mean, it's free, to be fair, but, you know, to visit our Santa's Grotto just to be greeted by a cardboard Santa. Well, they'll be greeted greeted by us. And we're Santa's elves. So not only do they not get to meet Santa, but they get stuck with the two worst elves ever seen. Speak for yourself. And they can't have their present from Santa until they've heard our awful singing. Who wrote the song? Who do you think? Alison Damson. Of course. You're not going to believe this, but she wrote the whole script during the 15 minute break from rehearsals for disc the Discount Booktop the musical. 15 minutes. Is she still doing that? Yep. Yeah, the cast changes are still frequent and the show's quality is still low, but she still sends me almost constant updates and assures me that she'll figure it out. How so frequent are her updates? I suspect it's as frequently as she goes to the toilet because every time she sends me videos there's always the sounds of toilet flushing, taps running, hand mm. dryers and all the rest of it in the background. 
So the show hasn't transferred to the West End yet? No, not yet. You should have got her on today to talk through her creative script writing process. I did, but she's deep in rehearsals. And songwriting process. Well, yeah, I did, but she's in, she's deep in rehearsals for the Discount Bookshop, the musical, and she's in the process of writing a pantomime for the Discount Bookshop, so... Did she get commissioned by head office to write that? No, she's doing, doing it voluntarily. She asked me to do an announcement, actually. Oh, God, I've only got a few minutes to record the podcast episode. Oh. Andrew, right, okay, quick. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, hello, hello, and welcome. Do you want me to go? Uh, if you want to, but can you do it really quietly, please? Okay, I'll see you later. Do you want any of these crisps? Not really, to be honest. You, do you not really like unusual flavours? I don't like change. Fair enough. Thanks anyway, though. Are you going? Oh, yes, yes. I'll go now. I'll go now. Just get... Yeah. Crisps. Yeah, get all your crisps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. please, just leave them. Just leave. I'll get them. I'll get them. I'll get them. Right, that's no problem. Absolutely. Off you go. Oh my god. Okay, so I am now running behind, so that is just... that's fine. <coughs> right, let's just begin. Okay. Um. Hello and welcome to this very concise episode 16 of the Discount Bookshop podcast. Um, as always, I'm Jess and I'm here to tell you everything you need to know about the Discount Bookshop for this month. Um, okay, to employees of the Discount Bookshop, Alison Damson, who you'll know as the supervisor in the Watford branch, is doing yet another theatrical project. This is a company-based pantomime called Do It In Nine Panto Time. Uh, it's a project whereby a pantomime is put together in nine days in December, and that will then be performed somewhere at some point. Presumably, let me just check... Um, yes, it will be performed at a venue which is yet to be announced, which is a worry, uh, in the week of Christmas. Uh, she's already begun writing the script and wants as many people as possible to audition. Uh, auditions will be held at head office in their meeting room on Saturday the 3rd of December, but head office say that you won't be allowed to take time off to audition, so you'll have to attend in your lunch break if you're currently working that day. Um, Unfortunately, oh, disappointing, I can't be there. Oh, I'm absolutely gutted, but you know, never mind. Um, so you will need to uh, perform one minute of a song and you will be given creative freedom when it comes to the acting section of the audition. No idea what that means, so don't ask me. Um, so just do what you think. Um, all questions can be sent directly to Alison at her store, or if you email customer services, they might be kind enough to forward the emails on. Or maybe they won't, because I haven't actually asked them yet, uh, and I probably won't. Um, Alison has said that she's looking for a cast of 40, 4-0, which seems ambitious to me, but whatever. And that includes the following roles. A bartender, a carpet cleaner, a queen, a knight, a king. Uh, just ignore that noise. Um, just having some uh, work done in the uh, shop. Um, that includes the following roles. A bartender, a carpet cleaner, a queen, a king, a knight, a tennis player, a praying mantis, a puzzle book enthusiast, a flame, a ghost, a f and famous author, it says and famous author, a giant duck, a retired athlete, and five people are needed to play a long pantomime horse. Again, no idea what that means. I guess it's just a longer than average horse. Not sure. Uh, questions to Alison, please. Okay. Other quick notices. Uh, Ethan Simmons, a supervisor in the Solly Hall branch, would like to know if anyone... Whoops, that's a loud noise. At... Okay, building work going on. Oh dear, um, not helping the, uh, okay. Uh, other quick notices, uh, Ethan Simmons, a, a supervisor in Solihull Branch, would like to know if anyone would be interested in starting a company band called the Discount Footnotes. He said that he's recently taking up the bassoon and would like some people to jam with. His words, not mine. Liam Bridge from the Tembe branch was wondering if anyone has seen his mobile phone, which he thinks he accidentally posted to a different store along with some spare uniform, loyalty cards and name badges. 
Um, he can't remember the type of phone it is and can't recall where he posted it to, but he's eager to get the phone back. According to him, it's a complete load of rubbish, that phone, but, if I, but I borrowed it off my cousin without telling them, and now they want it back. So let's hope that cousin isn't listening. And finally, before I announce this, employee, uh, this month's employee of the month, I've been asked by head office to read out some of the letters to Santa which have been posted into our Christmas post boxes in store. I had to rifle through letters to find ones which were actually readable on the podcast. And I'm not sure that reading them out loud on the podcast was the idea of the post boxes, but you know, whatever. Uh, please send any complaints to customer services. Um, the first letter, whoops, this is loud. The first letter, whoops, this is loud. Sorry, I'm, I could not apologise enough for this building work. Um, the first letter was written by Daniela, aged five, and it says, Dear Santa, please can you bring me a toy dog and also some pencil sharpeners and also a bag for all of my toy dogs. My parents say we can't have a real dog because they make a big old mess. Ha 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 ha. Smiley face. The second letter is by Carol aged 37 years and two months. Dear Santa, for Christmas I would like a really high shelf for me to keep all of my Christmas chocolates on without the kids being able to see or reach them. And that's it. Two. They were the only two which I could actually read out without there being complaints. So there you are, head office. Um, that was a really great use of time. Okay, um, so next is employee of the month. This person is a frequent visitor to the sea and loves the colour yellow. They are always enthusiastic, have a great work ethic and live next door to one of their fellow co-workers. What a funny coincidence. They have boundless energy, love to spend time with friends and always make time for everyone. He is a sales assistant at our store in Plymouth. His favourite food is a burger. He is passionate about marine life and is always ready for anything. Yes, Robert Hero is this month's Employee of the Month. Yes, congratulations to you, Robert. You were nominated by your manager, Opal Woods, for simply making everyone's day every day. So well done again, Robert. Now, before we go, we've got one last treat, if that's what you want to call it. We've got a poem by Caroline Hodgson Brown from our branch in Droitwich Spa. We haven't heard a poem for her for a while. And my God, has she sent me a lot of poems. Um, Unfortunately, I haven't had time to read any of them out. Also, I didn't read the emails because it's been she's sent me so many, it's been going to my spam folder. So, um, yeah, she's written a uh, poem here. Um, it's called... Uh, it's called Slipping on the Snow in Winter. So, you know, I hope you're sitting down while you're watching this. <clears throat> Slipping on the snow in winter is something that something is something that some people do they don't want to do it but sometimes you slip on your shoe if you're wearing appropriate footwear you will not have a fall but if you're wearing no shoes or no shoes at all then you might slip over because you haven't got the grip just for this christmas i'll give you a tip wear shoes that have good grip and you will find your feet and when you find them you can walk to the discount bookshop what a treat so that's that's uh that one um i feel i should get through some of the others because honestly it's clogging up my emails but i feel a bit bad deleting them without reading them out so let's go for another one um it's called uh the christmas train okay let's try this one i haven't actually read it before so god i hope god i hope it's okay the christmas train choo choos along the track where is it going? I hope that it will come back. I forgot to get on on the right platform. So, oh, do you know what? I think she just sent me half a poem because that's where it stops. That's a shame that is because that had really good potential. I can really, do you know what I liked about that is I can really imagine the train 
you know the choo choo bit i was thinking oh it must be going really fast you know and it's like a steam train you know and it's in the snow and oh, i can just picture it you know it'd be quite good if we had you know like a little toy train going yeah anyway so um but it, that's a shame that is it's a shame that one of the ones i've opened uh wasn't even maybe she sent that by accident so maybe i'll just try a different one hang on let me just see if there's another one that's a shame that is that's a shame so let's try a different one just having a look okay there's one called the christmas gnome that seems quite appropriate the christmas gnome was triangular in shape it liked living in the snow but it wouldn't stay awake the gnome was very sleepy he hadn't had much sleep at all he wondered if maybe when he woke up he would remember his dreams at all he did remember and he dreamt about the summer he wondered how long he would remember he dreamt about the summer she's written the same thing twice why is she sending me okay she sent me okay this is another incomplete one i really should have gone through these first right hang on do you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna have a quick look through i'll, I'll cut this bit out no that one no not using that one i've read that one's rubbish no i'm not reading that one rubbish 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 i deleted that on purpose I deleted that on purpose i deleted that on purpose oh god I deleted that on purpose mm. okay here's one here's one here's one i remember reading this this is actually quite good okay <coughs> Okay, this one by H Caroline Hodgson Brown is called Otters on the Christmas Frozen Riverbank. Walking along the riverbank, I see two otters playing. Their river has frozen over, but I don't see it hit, but I don't hear them complaining. They slide from bank to bank, laughing as they go. One's wearing a bow tie and the other is wearing a bow. I wonder if they would like to play on the carousel which lives by the riverside. I offer to pay, but they cast the money aside. We don't need money to have fun, they said. All we need is each other, and with the sun setting, off they went to bed. Oh, that's actually, that, do you know what? That is, that she has redeemed herself. That is very cute. And I think with that, that's a nice place to end the episode because I've got to go and sort out what's going on with this building work because it's doing my head in. So uh, that's it for episode 16 of the Discount Bookshop podcast. Um, as always, thank you so much for um, for listening. And I would really appreciate it if you would take the time to like and subscribe and rate this podcast. Um, but for now, I'll leave you with the the, vi the image of those otters sliding on the river, frozen river bank and uh i must go and see uh what are the free snacks people are giving out around town um because i'm hungry and because i'm hungry okay great thanks a lot